And let me say that again. What fun and exciting event happens the next time we're together. Why, is your, why do you look so surprised? Have you not looked at the syllabus? You forgot? You're ready. And this was, oh, this is for me. Why didn't you give it to me? You forgot, it's laying right there. So what fun and exciting event happens the very next time we're gathered together? Why? It's an exam. Yeah, how exciting is that? Ready or not, here it comes. How many questions? Oh, actually, sorry, sorry. Let me take roll. And unfortunately, our viewing audience is going to have to listen to this. Let me, I'll, but I do want to take roll so that I give you all credit for being here. Joseph Baker, you're here. Uh, Landon Brown, where are you hanging out? No Landon Brown. Uh, Ryan Cheney, you are here looking sharp. Blaine Christian, no Blaine. Caden Crawford. You all don't want to know where he's at. Ian Dambrovitz. Peyton. Di uh, yeah, Peyton Dial. Thank you, sir. Nate Edgeworth. Sarai. Grace is here. Connor Gillespie. Ellen Grayson. Skyla Harden. Gatlin Harris. Jackson. Hi, uh, Danny, man, John. Kenzie, my, Kenzie, my, going once, going twice. Yell at me if you're here. Corey McDonald, thank you. Lane Mud, no Lane. Hermes, on time even. How awesome! Doesn't it feel good? Did it feel good? Uh, Cam Pendleton, and welcome back. Say, say, Ray. Are you here? Awesome. Don't be so excited, man. I might be catchy. Hayden Robertson. Olivia. Sailor. Stella. Carson. Jaron. Jaron Stites. Going once, going twice. Emma Taylor. Blake Thompson. August, Vanderbilt. You gonna get those notes, man? Okay. Veronica, Vodder. Last but not least, Maxton. And last but not least, Maxton is not here. So everybody, so now, let's talk about the exam. How many questions on the exam do you think, Blaine? Mm. It's gonna be that way, isn't it? Blaine's not here. Caden's not here. Ian! How many questions? How many were on the last one? Well, that's what's, what we're going to do again. Why would I change? Do, do professors do that to you? All the time. Really, even though the exams are worth the same number of uh, points. They're just kind of willy-nilly. 20 questions next, this time, 20 questions, 25 questions the next time, 30 after that. Is that right? This means yes. Y'all, y'all know this, right? Hey, you paint. Is that monster distracting you? This means yes, right? This means no, and then this means I don't know. And actually, I guess I should do that on camera, shouldn't I? So, here's the camera. This means yes. This means no. And then I had an accounting professor teach me this. This means I don't know. Although I don't know if it really does or not. But you know makes for a funny line. So, same number of questions. What, I can tell, am I just gonna have to ride herd on you guys? Are you, or you got the exam questions. Huh? Oh, and you got the answers, bro, the cheat. So, practice exam, 20, and so the real exam has 25 questions. Tell me about your Scantron situation, Sarai. Yeah, we're the cool department. And I don't care if the world knows it. I don't care if the world knows it. Accounting's the cool department at Western, at the, in the Gordon Ford College of Business at Western Kentucky University. And we are the coolest department. Why? 
Because we're going to give you, we're going to give you your scantrons. What's wrong, man? Oh, my computer's tripping. Is it tripping? Yeah, it's cool now, though. It's cool now. Trip, it was tripping. Well, I mean, you, ho you hope it's not tripping because you don't got nothing here. I'm a phone if I have to. You got your phone if you have to. And so, um, I mean, we give you your scantrons. Makes you almost want to be an accounting major, doesn't it? What do you mean, you mean no? Why not? You think your, your major is going to be this exciting? So why did you choose? Why did you choose it then? Why why did you why did you choose why did you choose your major then if it's not going to be as exciting as a Well, Deep I, subject. I don't know what I want to do outside of my actual career path. So it's like I majored in the most broad major there was. Uh -huh. Which is business. But if you just majored in accounting, then you can do anything. You know. You can do anything. And you all learned that, right? Right? The video. Did not the video kind of suggest that, heck, you can become a baker, Instagram pro, baker, with an accounting degree. Always helps. Payne, how are you? You look a little sleepy. Just relaxing, chilling. Just chilling. So let's do the practice exam. So at least we'll get through the, as much as we can of the practice exam, okay? So be aware, you might be looking at the answers, but I'm still going to ask you why. Number one, Peyton, dial. <laughs> Which of the following would not be class? What are product costs? Let's kind of, what are product costs, Peyton? Like the, like what you do, like Say what? What you spend to make a product. So all costs associated with making a product. And so, so is it part of this chair? Or is it not? Okay. So what's question number, question number one asks, what is question number one? Uh, which one is not a product cost? Yeah. Which one? Uh, bonuses paid to sales staff. Paid to sales people. Why is that not a, a product cost? Yeah, because what do salespeople do? They sell stuff. Yeah. Do they make things? No. Do they make chairs? Or laptops? No. Or phones? None of the above. They're trying to sell them. So they're not, uh, they're not involved with making the product. So that is letter answer D, as in dog. Question. So and then I'll get your question. I agree with D, but D also says salaries of factory employees. Oh, man! Is that what you are going to ask about? That's a great question. Why is it wrong? It's dead wrong. Like dead, dead, wrong, wrong, awful. Never. Why? Why, 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 why? Why is that, the, the, you should always think like, yeah, it's always gonna be a product cost. Not even close, but let's get you, I wanna get you there. Why do you think so? I would say that because the janitor is gonna be cleaning all the machines and all the things that are involved yeah, where's the janitor working? That's what I want you to think about this as. Where does the janitor work? And, and for me, it's as imagine this business. Okay, imagine this business is the person working in the factory or in the offices. Okay, and so to me, it's as, really as simple as that. Is this person, because this person's in the factory, there are product costs. And so if they were cleaning, if they were doing that same job in the office building, they'd be a period cost, okay? So, no, but I appreciate you asking it, and so thank you. Forgive my overdramatic response, because your, your eyes are like, whoa! <laughs> and so does that help you as well, okay? So everybody, so I, I'm wagering you two you aren't the only two with that question. I would wager that. But when you're thinking about product versus period cost, a big part of the, what I think about is where is that person or where is that cost occurring? Is it in the factory? Then it's a product cost. If it's not in the factory, then it's a period cost. And then if it's in the factory, 
there are two that are easy to recognize, right? Direct materials and direct labor. And if it's not one of those two and it's in the factory, then it is manufacturing overhead. So you arrive at manufacturing overhead by process of elimination. And that's cool. In fact, that's the right way to get there, OK? What's the next question? Then? Number two, which of the following statements about product costs is true? Grace. Which of the following statements about product costs is true? <sighs> These are some harder ones. So she's reading carefully. You all should be reading carefully too, right? So which of the following statements about product costs is true? Product costs are deducted from revenue when the production process is completed. Product costs are deducted from revenue during the period in which they are incurred. Product costs are associated with unfinished goods and working process are on the balance sheet. Product costs are not recorded on the balance sheet until the products are sold. So what did I, what do you remember about this? Did, what did I describe? What did we talk about cost of goods sold? What do you all remember about cost of goods sold? Sold. So cost of goods sold, with cost of goods sold, where does cost of goods sold appear? It was on the quiz today. Nate, where does cost of goods sold appear? In the absorption income statement. So where is it at? What is the absorption income statement? Revenue minus cost of goods sold. Is cost of goods sold a product cost or period cost? Connor. Uh, you say product or period? Yes, sir. Product. It's a product. Cost of goods sold is always a product cost. And when, when do, and so this, you might want to make sure this is in your notes. When do we recognize cost of goods sold? And the word is, the, the, the when is in the phrase when they are sold. Yes, cost of goods sold is recognized when the item is sold. So when does Columbia recognize the cost of this shirt on their income statement? When it is sold. Okay, cost of goods sold. And the object, huh? What about before that? Oh, that's a great question. Where's, where's this cost hang out until then? It hangs out in inventory. Yes, right? It hangs out in inventory. They've got a stash of them, right? It would be like an asset? Yes, it would be. Inventory is an asset. It'd be an asset until it is sold, in which case it would be taken out of the asset account and put into cost of goods sold. Does that make sense? OK? And so understanding that, I'm not sure how well I explained that, Last class period, we were together, so hopefully you were taking notes and adding to your notes today. But that really helped, that should really help Grace answer this question, right? Because all, the, all these options are associated with that relationship. When they make it, it becomes an asset. On the, you know, when it's finished, it becomes an asset in inventory. When they sell it, they take it out of that asset account and put it in cost of goods sold. And on the day, at the moment, when they sell it. Okay? So does that help you, Grace? Because it kind of rules out several of the wrong answers, doesn't it? So what's the right answer? C is the right answer. Okay? Because... Um, Product costs are not deducted from revenue when the production process is completed, are they? Where do they go when the production process is completed? They go to inventory. Product costs are deducted from revenue during the period they're incurred. Wrong. When sold. Product costs are associated with unsold finished goods and work process appear on the balance sheet as assets. Quite true. Product costs are not recorded on the balance sheet until the products are sold. False. They actually wind up on the balance sheet first, as soon as they are made. And then they're taken off the balance sheet and put on the income statement when they are sold. Okay? Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts, piece of cake, walk in the park, easy, he's falling off a log. Ellen, what did I just say? Uh, 
Piece of cake walking in the park easy, just falling off a log. You can't repeat it? Not any part of it? <laughs> easy is falling off a log. Piece of cake, what's that mean? Piece of cake is, means it's easy. Walk in the park, easy is falling off a log. It's also easy. Piece of cake, walk in the park, easy is falling off a log. And then I may have also said, I think I also said, I'd have to go back and listen to the recording to know for sure. Did I think, I think I said, uh, any questions, comments, concerns, or random thoughts? Right. Blake, what did I just say? Questions, comments, concerns, or random thoughts. Do you have any? No. You all over this? Okay. Good, good. Let's move on to the next one then. What is the ending working process for the cost of goods sold statement of uh, car making corporation? So the like this problem right here is mostly just kind of doing the math, isn't it? Have you seen one of these before? Maybe not in my class, maybe not as I've discussed it in class, but they're on the homework, right? They're on the homework. And so how do we do these? So we got direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, that's $25,000, $10,000. $15,000, okay, we got beginning, work in process, $7,000, and then we got cost of goods manufacturing, okay, and this is basically a total, choo, 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 so cost of goods manufactured, Again, us accountants are not really good at naming things. What's, what do you think cost of goods manufactured is? It's the cost of the goods, cost of the stuff we manufacture. Cost of the stuff we manufacture, okay? And so we know that that's going to be a function of materials, labor, and overhead, right? Because those are all the product costs. Um, and then actually, this is, I don't know how to spell really well, do I? So what do you think we need to do to get a total here then, Skyla? Well, actually, I was just talking to Skyla. Gatlin, what do we need to do to get a total? Uh, Say again? Subtract. Subtract. Thank you. So, so what do you got for me, man? I mean, you don't expect me to do this when you got a good calculator right there in front of you, do you? No, just do the first three first. 25,000 plus 10,000 plus 15,000, 50,000. Did you need a calculator to do that, do you think? Did you? That's cool. That's cool. But I mean, you could almost do that in your head, couldn't you? I did. I couldn't do like 35 plus 15. 35 plus 15. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, remember to bring a good calculator for the exam because I won't let you use a phone. Okay? So no Apple Watches and bring a, I mean, a good calculator, a proper calculator. You can't use your phone. I don't give a darn in class, but. So now what do we got to do? So how do we get from total to cost of goods manufactured? Oh, it, it actually shows us, doesn't it? It shows you those parentheses, those parentheses mean subtract. Subtract. So, and so what is yeah, so? Uh, how do you get there from here, Jackson? What you gonna do for us? I mean, I mean, we got fifty thousand dollars minus seven thousand oh, dollars. Sorry, yeah, I kind of zoned out. Oh, did you now? Am I not? A, am I not loud enough? Am I not interesting enough? I mean, what am I doing wrong? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, subtract 
That's the second one of those t-shirts I've seen today. Did somebody give it to you? Gotcha. Do you think they gave them all away? Most likely. Maybe not. Yeah, that's what I hear. Were there a lot of people there? There were a lot of people there. Were there a lot of people, probably for the free t-shirts? Uh, yes, sir. That the coaches came for like a free drink and hot dogs. So none of them came for the basketball? I went for the basketball. You went for the basketball. Good, good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And so what does this represent? Cost of goods, the cost of the goods. Uh, cost of goods manufactured is the number that goes into into finished goods. So that's that's the cost of the stuff that was finished. Is what cost of goods manufactured represents. It represents the cost of the stuff that was that was finished, okay? And what's the letter answer? Oh, what the heck did I do? What did I do? Jackson, you're supposed to keep me straight and you didn't? What, what, what did I do? Oh my gosh. My foot's, my foot's causing my brain to hurt. Isn't it? Why didn't you say something? She just, she just wants to laugh at me. She just, Dr. Fessler, you don't know what you're doing, bro. That, and yeah, well, that might be true. I mean, who am I? I'm just the professor, you know? So we got beginning work in process. This is actually a positive number. This makes more sense, actually. The ending work in process is a question mark. And then this one we got is COGM45. Thousand dollars. Ooh, okay. I mean, it's still a true story. Cost of goods manufactured is what? The cost of the goods that goes to finished goods, okay? To finished goods. That's, that's where that's going. The, the finished goods being where the finished stuff hangs out. And say, let me get the chair out of your way. Why are you yawning? Am I not invigorating enough? You're just tired. Well, I'm tired too. You know, got four hours of sleep last night, something silly like that. So how do we get there from here? What? Did somebody just yawn? yawn? I'm trying to decide if I want to make this, if, if I help you to make this. Um, I tell you, if it helps you, use it. If it doesn't help you, just ignore what I'm about to do, okay? So beginning inventory plus what comes in equals ending inventory plus what goes out. And so this is out, this is beginning, this is end, and this is in. And so that is why we're doing what we're doing here. And that happens, this, for any inventory, this is what we would do for any inventory account. Like shirts, like shirts. So we, we start with a number, we started with 7,000 shirts being manufactured. We added all these costs, and then you subtract the end amount to wind up with this amount. And we're using this formula, okay? And so this is, this is kind of a long version of this formula, okay? Helpful, not helpful. Not helpful. Not helpful, helpful. Don't give a darn. Just to do the thing, just follow the math. Yeah, it's not intended to be too hard, right? Just kind of follow the math. But if you want to understand why, that's a little bit of why. 
Number four, which of the following manufacturing costs are product costs? Danny. What? Yes, number three is D. Oh, I am just rocking today. I am rocking. So it's 50,000 plus 7,000 minus 45,000 equals, what is letter answer D? What's the number? 12,000. 12, is that what it works out to be? And that's how you do it. Okay? Piece of cake walking in the park, easy falling off a log. Okay? Now, Danny, back at you. Just been giving you a little bit of, little bit of time to think here, collect your thoughts. Number four, which of the following are manufacturing costs? D. Oh, man, that's pretty easy, isn't it? Because what are the three categories of product costs, Danny? Is that the order that I taught them to you in? No. What is the order that I taught them to you in? Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So pizza, pizza number five. Corey. Pizza, pizza delivers pizzas, believe it or not, to the dormitories and apartments near a not so major state university. I mean, this question was written a long time before I came to Western, so, you know, it's somewhere else, for sure. Because this is major. Actually, I think Western has the largest undergraduate population in any university in the state of Kentucky. Yeah, large, large actually undergraduate, because University of Kentucky and University of Louisville have larger graduate student populations, but I think Western has the largest undergraduate population. True story, the company's annual fixed cost of $40,000 makes the price of a pizza $10 and the company cost $5 to make you deliver each pizza. The pizza company sold 21,000 pizzas last year. How much income did Pizza Pizza earn? Oh man, oh man, oh man. You know, I think we can use some of that information that you all, um, gave me today on the quiz. Okay, first of all, let me get some help for you. Because we got our, are you paying attention, sir? You are my variable costing income statement expert. What is the variable costing income statement format? Um, revenue minus variable cost equals Are you asking? Or telling me. So tell me then instead of ask me. So revenue minus variable cost equals contribution contribution margin. And then contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operation. Operating income. Okay. Is that you is that gonna be helpful information for you? And when you're doing this question, how do you know you need that income statement format? Hermes, why do you why do we think why do you think we need the variable costing income statement format and not the absorption costing income statement format? I mean, that is a true statement, but that does not answer my question. That's an absolutely true thing you said, but it doesn't answer my question. <laughs> why, when we look at number five, why do you think we need the variable costing income statement format and not the absorption costing income statement format? Want to calculate all the expenses well, they both have lots of expenses. What's the trigger? What do you read in this problem that says, hey, variable costing income statement format? Corey? No. They both have it. Yes. They give you fixed cost. Which one of the two income statement formats has fixed cost? Variable costing income statement format. And so basically, they give you all the information. If you look at it, they give you all the information you need to prepare the variable costing income statement format. 
and almost none of the information you need to calculate the absorption cost in income statement format, okay? Give me a number, please, Corey. Um, for revenue, it would have to be 21,000 times 10. 21,000 times 10 equals $210,000, which is 21,000 times 10. And that's actually, be very careful, right? That's $10, right? It's $10 they're selling each one for. Give me another number. Uh, Cam. Do they, they got some numbers there, don't they? You know what FC stands for? Fixed cost. Do you see any fixed costs in here? If you read through there. How much? $40,000 of fixed costs. Okay. See, this isn't so hard, Cam, is it? You just got to read, follow directions. This is, this is just, I mean, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Say another number. What is 21,000 times five? No, it's not contribution mark. Oh, it kind of is. It actually is, but it's not the right answer. Yeah. Because that five dollars is what? What's the label on the five dollars? That's the delivery. What? The five dollars you gave me. What is that five dollars? What's it say? It costs the company five dollars to make and deliver each pizza. So that is, is that a variable cost or a fixed cost? It is a variable cost. Okay, so that's not the contribution margin, that's the cost. It's the cost to make, say. So equals 21,000 times $5. Now, the math gives you 105, and then the math here gives you 105. So mathematically, it is the contribution margin. I mean, it's the same number, but the description of the number is, you better make sure you know what it is, because that number is the variable cost. And then the contribution margin is a calculation based on that. Huh? You with me? You going to write anything down? I mean, you could. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but you, but you, but you, but you, but you could. Hayden, what do you want to say to me? Hayden Robertson? Huh? Well, uh, can you give me, uh, are we done? It gives you 65,000, and that gives us which letter answer? You could use your phone to pull, to, uh, to, huh? So you're trying not to use it? Except you're using it all the time. <laughs> so, so you could move, and maybe the gentleman behind you might be kind and willing to share. But you're not going to, you're not maximizing your learning experience by not knowing what the problem is. But you need to know what the problem is. I mean, you got a friend behind you. He's a, he's a nice dude. <laughs> Did you really? You bit him? Well, I mean, you do you, Hayden, but I want you, to, I would like to see you do better than that. Olivia? Letter answer C, okay? Letter answer C. Okay, next, let's do number six. Wages paid to machine operators in an assembly line are an example of what? Sailor. Say what? Is it messing up again? You know what I've noticed? Do you feel like I'm louder now than I was like a week ago? I feel like. Yeah, I know. I hadn't thought about it, but I am. I, f I mean, I'm bicycling. I'm bicycling. I've bicycled ten times now, eleven times now, this year so far. Outside, you know, average sixteen point nine miles an hour on Saturday, which I'm rather, really proud of, because for a fat old man like me who's out of shape, 
that's that's uh, mostly the bicycle. I've got a really awesome bicycle. I think I showed you all a picture of it. Did I show you all a picture? Yeah, on the first day of class, you just don't remember. No picture? You said yes. First day of class? Yeah, first day of class, I think. I think so. <laughs> and so I ride a recumbent where you're laying out kind of flat. It goes. It goes. I mean, I've done 40 miles an hour on this thing, downhill, but I've done 40 miles an hour. And so anyway, I feel like I'm getting fitter. And as a result, I'm getting louder. You know, my lungs, heart and lungs, are, they're kind of getting, getting, feeling more put together. Just, you know, it's just easier to be loud, I think. Sailors, I've given you enough time to come up with some kind of an answer to the question. Yeah, come on, man. We're waiting. Is it, uh, direct what? It's direct labor. Direct labor cost. Yes, it is. Letter answer B, right? Because yes. machine operator are people too. Direct labor costs are people too. So it is, it is B. Let's look at the next one then. Number seven, managerial accounting is deemed most successful if it does what? Ah. Stella. Yes. Helps managers make decisions. It's more important that it help managers make decisions than it be accurate. Because sometimes less accurate but more timely information, you're looking at me kind of funny, but sometimes more timely information isn't perfectly accurate, but it's received in time to help somebody make a decision. Like perfectly accurate information a week late is useless. Okay? So, so a rough estimate on time is better than perfectly accurate information too late. And so the correct answer is B. Helps managers make decisions. Number eight, which of the following statements are true, Carson? Did we talk about this? Variable cost, we did talk about this. Variable costs in total versus variable costs on a per unit basis. Fixed costs in total versus fixed costs on a per unit basis, okay? Ah, this one's a little bit tricky too, isn't it? You got to know your stuff. Is it D? Why are you asking me? It's D. It is D. It is D. Fixed costs on a per unit basis are variable or vary. Variable costs on a per unit basis are fixed or constant. Variable costs do not vary on a per unit basis. So letter answer D, both A and C are true. Gross margin. What is gross margin considered to be? August. I know this is rough. This is the wrong income statement for you. For you. Why? Why? Just waiting to hear an answer. Why? Take a sip of coffee. That might help. Oh, God, <laughs> and then no help forthcoming. You chugged that, man. What is the absorption costing income statement format, August? Just rattle off the whole thing. Revenue minus cost gives sold gross margin. Keep going. Minus? Gross margin minus selling administrative costs equals operating income. Yes, and so that's why it's letter answer C, right? Because revenue minus cost of goods sold is the absorption cost of income statement format. So that's why it is the letter answer C. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what is the certification for management accountants? <sighs> Veronica? CMA. Do you know what it stands for? Certified Management Accountant. Certified Management Accountant. I am a CMA. I'm also a CPA, but I am the only CMA in the department. So, and notice it does use the word certification. It's a certificate. 
It's not a license. The CPA is actually a license. It's a license to do audits. CMA is a certificate. It's a, at one point in time, I was smart enough to pass a test. And I have maintained some professional relevance by continuing to take professional, uh, continuing education classes, okay? Thank you, Veronica. Max is not here. Joseph, coming at you, the rubber used in the manufacture of automobile tires would be considered what? Oh, here's some new words. Did we define prime costs and conversion costs? Yes, we did. We'll have somebody help him. Landon, what's a prime cost? Landon's not here, so he's not going to. Ryan, what's a prime cost? Wow, yeah, yeah. What's a prime cost? Direct materials and labor. Direct materials and direct labor. What's a conversion cost? Blaine. Not here. Caden, not here. Ian, back at you. Direct labor plus manufacturing. Direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. Okay? Direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. So that might help you, Joseph. Let's look at number 11. Rubber used in the manufacture of automobile tires would be considered which of the following? It would be all of the above. It is, it's, it is direct materials, because it's a big part of what's in the tire. It is a prime cost, and it is a product cost. Letter answer E, perfect. Managerial accounting, number 12. And who did I just talk to? I just talked to Ryan. Just talk to Ian. Thank you both. Sarai, number 12, please. Managerial accounting. Is it governed by generally accepted accounting principles, Sarai? Correct answer. So we, you can cross off letter answer A. Letter answer B, places emphasis on special purpose information. I don't know. That. We could, let's put a question mark there for a moment. Okay. Does it pertain to the entity as, pertains to the entity as a whole and is highly aggregated? That is incorrect, right? That's incorrect because it's often very specific. This, this, in fact, letter answer C better describes financial accounting information. Is letter answer D is limited to cost data. So is the only information that we've dealt with this semester numbers with a dollar sign. So I want to do that on the board. Is this, is this the, are these the only numbers that we care about, our dollar sign? What do you think, Sarai? No is the correct answer. Because do we care, for example, how many employees do we have? Or how many guitars did we make last month? Or how much cloth is in a shirt? Do we care about that? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And so that's also a wrong answer. So we're circling back, aren't we? Notice how I kind of led us through this, though. This is, again, legit test-taking strategy. Let's kind of chop off some of these and kind of wiggle our way in. So what does letter answer B, what's it, what's it saying? Places emphasis on special purpose information. It's really kind of the op B, although it's weirdly written, is kind of the opposite of C, right? C says, this information's big and aggregated. Big aggregated information is useless for individual decision makers. Useless. Special purpose information, kind of very specific to a specific, you know, information that's very specific to a specific decision, that is useful for decision making. And so uh, that is letter answer B, okay, for number 12. Let's look at number 13, Peyton. B. Because it's direct materials a period cost? No. Heck, heck, heck no. Right? Is direct materials made the same thing as manufacturing overhead? No. So that leaves, is direct materials a product cost? Sure enough is, isn't it? Absolutely. So there we are. Beautiful. Thank you. Letter answer B. 
<clears throat> Number 14, grace, variable costs or costs that. Hmm. A is true, isn't it, for sure? What is Because what is the definition, Nate, what is the definition of a variable cost? Please do. Please do. Although you can't look on the test. That's true. Okay. Yeah, variable cost is a cost that varies with the number of units produced. So Grace is absolutely right, isn't she? That A is a correct answer. Is it the correct answer, though? Is B correct? Do variable costs remain the same? Actually, on a per unit basis? Yes, they do. Right, and Sarai, the, the, the reason for that is, recall when we were making shirts, we were spending four, imagine that there's four dollars worth of cloth in every shirt that Columbia makes that looks like this. How much do they spend on cloth on the first shirt? Four dollars. How much do they spend on cloth for the second shirt? Four dollars. How much do they spend on cloth for the fifth shirt? Four dollars. How much do they spend on cloth for the tenth shirt? Four dollars. So variable costs remain the same on a per unit basis. Okay? So that means both letter answers A and B are correct. So what are you going with then, Grace? A or B? D? Whoa! D. D is the correct answer, right? D is the correct answer because both A and B are correct. Okay? Contribution margin. Tell me, where do we find contribution margin? Connor. Uh, variable costing income statement format. What is the variable costing income statement format? Rattle it off for us. Okay, so our viewing audience didn't hear that, so I'll repeat it. Revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? It's been an hour already. Wow. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, so, revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. So what is the answer to number 15, Ellen? caught her off guard. I know, isn't it awesome? I'm, I'm on my second round through the class. I mean, did I or did I not, on the first day of class, you may or may not have been here on the first day of class, I don't remember. But on the first day of class, didn't I say that I was going to, my goal was to talk to everybody, every class period. And what did you think at that time when I said that? You weren't sure I was actually going to do it. How am I? I'm doing re re reasonably well. I'm not perfect at it, but doing reasonably well, I think. So I'm just giving you time to think. You think it's A. What are the answer choices here? Which one are we doing? A is a correct answer. So, but the question is, are there any others that might also be correct? So that is an absolutely correct thing. To, it is absolutely correct answer. The, the, uh, the you know, like I said, the only question is, well, hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Ellen, are there any other correct answers? B is certainly a correct answer too. So what's that make the correct answer? D. Letter answer D for number 15. 16. Coronaut Company sells 100,000 wrenches for $12 a unit fixed cost of $300,000. An operating income is $200,000. What should be reported as variable expenses on the variable com costing income statement format? Well, that is no fun, Blake. They tell you what income statement format we got to use. Blake, are you also an expert on the variable costing income statement format? Um, yes. 
What is it? Perfect. And so now that's the hard part, right? That's the hard part. Now we just take these numbers and fill them in, right? Because they tell us fixed costs are $300,000. That's a pretty easy one to kind of just put in there, right? That one, that one, I'm just copying and pasting. Ooh. Operating income, it says, is $200,000. Again, that's just copy paste from the problem. There's a little bit of math required here, isn't there? Blake, what comes next? What, uh, what about, what other number do we need to put in here? Yes, $1,200,000 for revenue. Skyla, what are you thinking about over there? Now what? Um, you're not for sure. Well, have we used up all the information from the problem? Um, yes. Yes, I think so. Oh, this is mean of me, isn't it? Like, I don't show you how to do the math. No, like, she's looking at the answers and she's like, Dr. Fessler, you're not helping me enough. No, I looked and I was confused. Well, I'm not, still not helping you enough. Can we calculate the contribution margin? Mm -hmm. When you see a problem like this, when you see a problem like this that has just empty holes in it, right? That's kind of, treat it like a puzzle. Right? Treat it like a puzzle. What can we do? Can we, like there's two missing numbers, right? And I'm instinctively going towards contribution margin because I have two pieces of information down there, but I only have one information, piece of information at the top. And so do you think we can calculate the contribution margin? How do we do that? I think we can too. I think we can too. How do we do that? Yes, sir. 500,000, how'd you get that? Because you made the 200,000, so 500 minus 300 is 200. Yes, 500 minus 300 is 200, or 200 plus 300 is 500,000, and that serves as the perfect check, right? 500,000, this, does this work? If I put $500,000 there, is that mathematically true? Okay. Yes, it is. Now, oh my goodness, this is looking promising, isn't it? We did that first, now can we do this? What do you think, Gatlin? What is it? 700,000. Is that one of our letter answers, Gatlin? Which one? A, letter answer A, oh, we're there. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts? Jackson, what question you got for me? Beautiful. Then you can do number 17 for me. Under variable costing, fixed manufacturing overhead are treated as? They're actually, mm, they're actually treated as a period cost. How would you know that? I think because I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I, 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 well, haven't you watched the videos? You've, have you ever heard of YouTube? I've watched the videos. Okay, I thought you said you hadn't. No. Good. You like them? Awesome. And you like not being in them? Yes, I do. You like not being in them because the, the camera's only paint point. You know, it is kind of bland, unfortunately, isn't it? Because it'd be more exciting if there was somebody in the back of the room kind of following me, right? And, and then zooming into the board when they needed to. And that would be a better situation. But, but I think this, this has been working. Hopefully it's been working. Um, under variable costing, because remember, Yeah, I think you would know this only because I'm telling you now. I'm not sure I've actually said this before. Yeah, I don't think I've said this before. Variable cost under fixed, under variable costing, fixed manufacturing overhead is treated as a period cost, actually. And a period cost, when do we recognize a period cost in the income statement form? On the income statement in the period incurred. And so, um, yes. So I'm just kind of telling you now, and now you know. So. It's good. For, it's good of you. It's good that you're here, so you can learn this stuff. Um, Danny, 
Number 18. What does your all say? So, following costs were incurred in March. What is the question for you, Danny? What kind of cost during the month total? What's it say? What's that first word down there? Does it say conversion costs? Okay. What are conversion costs? Ah, uh, see, the thing is, I need to reword that. Um, Oh, no, I don't necessarily. Yep. Oh, it is right. It is right, isn't it? Never mind. Never mind. I don't know why I was worried. I've got the word prime written on my notes here, and I'm not sure why. So, Danny, what's the right answer? Corey, can you help out Danny? How do we calculate prime cost? Or uh, conversion cost? Direct labor, plus direct labor plus manufacturing overhead, Danny. Do we got direct labor manufacturing overhead there? And how much do they add up to? Letter answer D. What do we think about that? Do you like it? Is that what the solution says? Those of you who are looking at the solution, uh, Skyla, is that what, what letter? What letter answer does the solution say for number eighteen? B or D? D is in dog. Okay, beautiful. Everything's together then. I don't know why I did that, but okay. Piece of cake, walk in the park, easy, swan off log. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. How are we feeling, everybody? I'm glad you're here. I hope you are glad you're here. I think it'll help you on the exam, okay? Hermes, the following costs were incurred in January. Let's add up prime costs. And what do they add up to? $65,000. Which is which letter answer? B. 19's letter answer B. Fab company, number 20, manufactures textiles. Fab's manufacturing costs for the year included salaries and wages. Which of these? Is direct labor. Cam. And so the question you want to ask yourself, Cam, is which of those people are actually working on the product itself? Pardon? Loom, do you know what a loom is? Has anybody ever seen, seen videos of, either in person or videos of people making rugs? They have a big old machine that they kind of weave, use as a kind of a big weaving device. That is a loom. So your answer is correct. The loom operators and the loom operators only. The supervisors, their primary job isn't to work on the product. And the people who are maintaining the machines, they are also not, their primary job is not making rugs. And so the correct answer is D, just the loom operators, OK? Um, number 21, say, fixed costs expressed on a per unit basis. Tell me about them. You think so? You don't know. What's your def what definition you got written down for fixed cost? Labor spent on your product that you never the units. Remain the same regardless of the number of units produced. So remember, we were spending a hundred dollars a month on the sewing machine, right? So if they make one shirt with that sewing machine, how much are they spending per shirt? A hundred dollars for one shirt. 100 for two shirts. It's 100 in total, but how much per shirt? So that if, they make, if they're spending $100 a month on the sewing machine and make two shirts with that sewing machine, what is the fixed cost per shirt? 100 divided by 
two, okay? How about if they make five shirts? $100 divided by five, 20 actually, 20. And then how about $100 divided by 10? Is how much? $10. So what, are, what is going on with these costs that I've just described? You all are packing up. Don't I have another 10 minutes, nine minutes? I got another nine minutes. So what's going on with these costs? As we increase production, what's going on with the cost? It's decreasing. Is that the letter answer? Well, decrease with increases in activity. That is it. Letter answer B. Everybody feel that? What are you complaining about, Ian? You feeling it? What's the answer to number 21? B. Okay. Number 22. Hayden, which is all the following would be classified as product costs except. And again, kind of, I would really encourage you, this one's a little, little weirder than the last one, but I would encourage you to think about it in terms of are these costs associated with the factory building and the things that are going on inside? Or no, but they are in the building where production occurs. No, they're, what are the taxes on? Machines, I think, right? Yes. So, so if it has to do with the building where production happens, what's not associated with production? Which, uh, it's, I think there's one, one extra word you didn't say. What staff? Advertising. advertising staff. So advertising staff. Marketers aren't making chairs, are they? What are marketers doing? They're doing whatever marketing does to sell the chairs. They're not making them. So it is letter answer C. K companies, 1998 fixed manufacturing over and cost totaled $100,000 and variable selling cost totaled $80,000 under variable costing. How much of these would be classified as product costs and as period costs? Now this one, remember what I told you before. Under the variable costing income statement format, fixed costs are treated as A period cost. You need to know that in order to get the right answer. Because so what is the right answer, Olivia? D. D. And that is why. And that is why. Questions, comments, concerns, random thought? Gentlemen? That's creepy. Is that, what is that, your phone? Alarm? What is that? An alarm. Please leave Dr. Fessler's class, but, but, but that's five minutes to go. It's a little early. Get the hell out? No? He's got an alarm for, get out of Dr. Fessler's class. Hurry! Hurry! Number 24, Sailor. An income statement prepared in his internal report using variable costing, variable selling and administrative expenses would be used. One thousand one. Stella. What is the variable costing income statement format? We need to help out our friend the sailor here. What's the variable costing income statement format? She put her stuff away, didn't she? Yeah. Shame on you. Yes, revenue minus variable cost equals contribution margin minus fixed cost equals operating income. That should be helpful for this question, should it not? I guess, actually, Stella. 
<laughs> it's there too. It's there too. Ah, an income statement. So, so sailor, what are you going to give me here, man? Are variable selling and administrative costs a variable cost? Yes or no, sailor? Yes. So do you think they'd be used in the calculation of contribution margin? Yes. yes. Letter answer B, they'd be used in the computation of contribution margin. Yeah, exactly. Why are you laughing at him, man? I'm not laughing at him. <laughs> are you laughing with him? Although he's not laughing as hard as you. <laughs> Number 25, how are we doing? Three more minutes, this will be our last one. Under absorption costs and product costs include. What are the categories of product costs? Carson. Carson. Ouch. I just pinched myself. You made me hurt myself, Carson. Carson, how many categories of product cost? <laughs> and what are they? What are they? Overhead. And so what's this question asking us? Ouch. Hope you appreciate, I just inflicted pain upon myself to try and help you all learn stuff. And my apologies for being right next to you. Carson, focus. Is fixed overhead a product cost? Yes. Is variable factory overhead a product cost? Yes. So letter answer C, everybody. Number 25, make sure you study good, right? We got an exam on Thursday. Thank you all for being here, and we will see you Thursday, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Be here on time. Bring a writing utensil, a great calculator, but no Scantron. <laughs>